Hello, I'm Sheena Douglas and uh, for this video I'm going to show you some of my favourite techniques using my own um, personally designed embossing folders which are all 5 by 7 so they're a good size and as you can see here's an example of a card where I've used it in the background and I might have to move that a little bit to see how blinktastic that card is. Um, to be honest I was torn whether I should put something in this corner but you know what, why cover it when it's so pretty? So that's an example there. Um, let's look at another example here. Um, another one of the folders, as you can see, used in the background there. Again, um, rich colours, works great with your Illuminar backgrounds. And um, perfect. All right. And then finally, another one I want to mention is this here. We've got all shabby chic. Um, if you look here, I've embossed the background. I've also embossed onto acetate and highlighted that. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So in case you're wondering, this is what the folders look like. This is what you're looking for. You can see they're a good large size and the retail on them is really reasonable. I think you'll be really shocked when you see how um, such a low price they are. Um, okay, so let's get cracking. So the first quick and easy technique I'm going to show you is this background here, which I think looks like old plaster. It looks really looks, looks like old, like, you know, the old chalky paint and plastery look. If you can't see that as much, here's another example of it. I just love that, that really distressed, shabby, very pretty, shabby chic look. So it's really easy. How we do that is, um, let's use the swirl folder for this one. Um, and you're going to need some, I use some watercolour card because it's already got that bit of texture and it really just holds the shape. Uh, it just works for this technique, I think, really well. Now, I'm going to ink up the actual folder. I'm going to ink the raised bit. So this is the positive, that's the negative. Get used to reading your folders. Just feel across them. This is the raised bit. So I'm just going to go ahead with my Distress Ink and just go over the whole thing. I'm using, in this case, it's antique linen. Any of the really pale pumice stone would work great for this. Even if you wanted to use like the pale tattered rose or something, if you wanted it pinky. Now, if you want this all perfect and smooth, you would brayer this on. So use a brayer to pick up the colour and then roll your brayer onto the folder. But I'm not bothered because I want this to look a little bit just distressed looking anyway and not perfect. So that's that. Then that's going to go in there in my folder, shut it and then I'm going to run this through my um, Grand Calibre. Now I'm going to go off screen to do this but I will tell you that the sandwich before I do it is your grey mat it's your embossing folder, so it's a base plate, your embossing folder, about three pieces of card I've taped together, and then your raspberry plate. That's how I'm, I'm using mine. Okay, I'm off to do that, and I'll come back in a sec. Right then, so there it is, the um, folder, and let's have a look what it looks like. So you see, when you take it out, fab, love it. Absolutely love that look. I just think it suits that design so well. And what I would do, obviously, is trim it down. So trim around in your guillotine. Um, but I just, I think that's a perfect backdrop for a pretty pinky, rosy, shabby, chic looking card. Absolutely spot on. So that's dead easy. That's one thing to do. Love that. All right, moving on to another. If we want to create um, a really nice wood type background, um, for example, this one here, using the, the wood finish um, folder, I would use distressings, and this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take, first of all, some, this is Centura Pearl Card, the reverse side. So to create the wood type background, I've chosen some nice warm, what I think are woody kind of colours. And this is the kind of thing we can do. We could add a little bit of red in that as well, why not? All right, so this is the technique that you might have seen me do before. Need some distress, um, some cut and dry foam. And we're literally just going to splodge colour onto the card like this. Big, bold splodges of colour all over. So I'm using Rusty Hinge at the minute because I think that's just a nice, warm, kind of woody colour. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to come back and catch up with me in a minute. Let's use some olive in there as well. It might have a bit of a greeny colour tone there. Why not? And the other colour I'm going to use is, I think I'll use Vintage Photo. Keep it really more of a warmer tone than the um, warm stain. So either Vintage Photo or one, one Steam will work great for this. Now this is what I'm going to continue doing and you're going to come back to me in a minute. Okay, so what I've done is I've covered the whole of the surface there with the ink and you can see it eventually just starts to blend in. One thing you can do is just spritz it with some water or even better, drop some water on with your hands but make sure you drop the water down. You know, don't want to flick it because we want some drops on here, not splats. And then immediately just blot it 
and you get some texture in the background as well i just like just that little extra stuff going on you've got to kind of try it out because some it's depending on what your cards like and depending on how long the ink's been there you might have to leave it longer or or um or not as long i've just realized the reason that didn't come off like the waters i've just spritzed it with my luminar pearl spray i bet you would never know if i hadn't fessed up there that'll be prettier again okay that's better say we've got some real good marks and stuff in there i just like that it just again i think layering and texture is all interesting now i'm going to run that through the um through my caliber or big shot or whatever or cuttle book whatever you've got um with the wood grain and then we'll come back right so that's gone through the machine now so remember we inked it up and then we put it through and now we've got the base color which is all nice and interesting but now what i want to do is highlight these raised areas because they're not showing up enough for me so what i'm going to do is go back to my cut and dry foam i'm going to pick up some of what dark color like vintage photo or even um walnut and go just over the surface and hopefully what will happen is you'll start to see the raised areas really picking up the color so I'll just go over, I'm going to go over a little bit with this and then I'm going to come over with black suit as well. So hopefully even on the camera now you can see where it's starting to pick up the green. But that's, you use it lightly, you don't want to press it into all the little nooks and crannies. The secret is, is you're skimming across the top. So this could be the same for any of the other, it could be the swirls, it could be anything. Um, any of those other images, it just works a, a treat. I just really like this. Okay, so we've got some of them picked out there, highlighted. But I really want to darken that a lot. So now I'm going to go to some black soot, really give it some welly especially around the sides because we can emphasize that nice vignette look by concentrating more around the edges see how that's picking that out and then when you finish trim it down to size i always like to do whatever i'm doing to my folders and then trim it because then then you've got everything finished you can see where the boundaries are as well more clearly you know what I think that's pretty cool I would leave that at that quite happy with that got lots of texture and interest going on there fab imagine that with a really pretty pink rose against it, it looks like an old wood plank some of your paint fusion um, decoupage onto there perfect right next one now this one I love this is just blinktastic in the extreme I absolutely love this background so what I've used is obviously the leaf um, embossing folder. I've pre-sprayed the background with some Luminart the, sh the Shimmer Mists and the colours I've used um, were things like the this one is Key Lime. I used a little bit of the um, Teal Zircon and I may have even put a little bit of the old Blue Flame in there around the edges. So just spray some card and then emboss it. And this is the kind of, this is the next stage. This is what I've done with this one. Different colour way, but I thought we'd see how it looks, okay? So you can see, just sprayed background and embossed. And the leaves are on there. The next thing that's going to make these really pop out is this. This is the um, the colour concentrate from um, Luminart, or the, the, the dabbers. So give it a little tap, get the mica mixed up. And then what you're going to do, it's dead easy. You're going to press it down to get the pump action working. And then just go ahead and bling over your leaf, your leaf area. And what will happen is, if you just keep rubbing over the top, it should actually highlight the raised area as well. It's such a really simple but effective technique. And the more you go over, the more mica clings to that raised area. Love it. Ooh, this is going to be pretty colourway as well. Now it's it's going to flood. It's not a precision application. You're gonna it's going to kind of um, you know catch around the outside of the area of those images as well. But that doesn't matter. I think that just adds to the appeal of it. I just think it's so pretty. See, where I'm just pumping it. Stamp. Well, if it gets too wet, just don't pump it the next time. You see, there's quite a bit come out there. So there's probably enough in the dabber to do the next one, and there is. So don't press down if you don't want the ink to cut the um, the mica ink to come out. Just light pressure, and then when you need to activate it again, you just press it down again. 
So there we have it. All I did was continue with the other leaves. I've dried it almost still a little bit wet which is why it's a little raised in areas and trimmed it and I just think that is just absolutely jewel like I love it I just think that's a great effect okay one more right so the final thing I want to show you is this acetate how you can emboss the acetate but color it as well um, you can see it's an overlay on this card and again I think it works great with a shabby chic look so if you didn't get that there's a one with the leaves so you can see Okay, and there's one with the swirls, very, um, again, pretty shabby chic. Okay, so how we do that is we need to get an um, embossed acetate sheet. Like I have here. And um, what you want, what you need to do is work on the reverse side. So you need to feel the, um, the, deboss side is the one you want then you want to take some of your pebio white or even the antique white acrylic paint would be great i'm not going to do the whole thing i'm just going to show you quickly how i do it and you're going to paint in the little bits now these lights i'm working under are really hot so i'm only going to do it probably a bit at a time so you paint in the bits and then you get some paper preferably clean and you're going to just wipe over the top and hopefully that's going to leave you some paint in the recesses now if it's not coming off like you say that's dry already I am um, just dampen your paper towel there you go now I like it if you've got a little bit of the paint left behind to be honest see where it's a little bit streaky I really like that little greeny look so I would just continue working on the rest of it I find it easier than doing the whole thing at once this is just from trial and error I just find that easier so we've got some more in there don't dilute the paint get right into the little recess bits and then get back in with your towel and just wipe over it and then remember just a little bit of water if you need to. Comes off really easily when you if you really wet the tissue. So it's up to you how much you want to leave on and how much you want to take off. It's a balance between having some white on the background um, or removing too much of the recessed bits. I quite like the look of having some of that little streaky white bits on the background because I think against a you know another background it's just going to look really fab you see so that's how we work with the acetate <laughs>